Good morning, everyone. I hope that you're well today. Welcome back to Digital SML. The other SML leaders and I, we really miss you. We miss sitting in front of you and uh, chatting to you during our lessons um, and listening to what you have to say. So if you see any of us about, if you see us at pickups at school or when you're out walking your dog or in the shops or anything, please do give us a little wave or a smile or say hello because we really do miss you and we're looking forward to being able to be together with you again. Now I'm not sure what you've been doing um, to pass the time over the last few months when maybe you've been stuck at home or not able to go away very far. But one thing that we've really enjoyed in this house is making stuff. So we've been baking and we've been sewing and knitting and painting and chalks and, and all sorts of things. Um, and so I wanted to show you some things that we've made um, this morning. One other thing that we love to do is we love to go to beaches and we love to pick up pretty stones and um, we've been doing some stone painting. So I have some stones to show you that we've, that we've made. So the first one, this is a bit wet because it's raining outside today. Um, this is a welcome stone. Can you see that? So this goes at our front door um, to say welcome to people who, who come to our front door. Um, this is one that I made, this is wet too, this is one that I made to put in the garden. It says be kind and that's a little reminder to us to be kind to each other when we're playing. Um, this is one that I made and it says pray. And it reminds me when I look at it that I can pray anytime. Um, this is one that Bethany made. I'm sure she won't mind me showing you. I like this one. So that side says fish and that one says selfish because it says me, me, me. I like that one. And this is one that I made as well. And I don't know if you can read that but that says God is bigger. Now I, I sometimes have, um, have worries. Sometimes my worries seem really small um, and sometimes they seem really big. And God has been teaching me over the last months that he is bigger, that he is bigger than my worries. And so I wrote this on the stone to remind me that God is bigger. I'm going to lead us in prayer now. And because I can't ask you what you're thankful for and I can't ask you, you know, what you're worried about at the minute, um, I'm just going to leave little gaps in the prayer. And I'd love you to, and the grown-ups as well, I'd love you to just fill in the gaps um, in your mind um, things that you're personally thankful for and things that you maybe little worries or big worries um, that you want to bring to God because God is bigger. So hands together and let's pray. Heavenly Father I thank you so much for your love for us. I thank you that you have been with us and um, through these last months and um, while things have been different I thank you for our friends and our family, for those that we've been able to spend lots of time with, and also for the technology to keep in touch with those that we haven't been able to see as much as we'd like. I thank you for our schools reopening. Thank you for our teachers and for our headmasters and for all the things that they've put in place to allow us to be able to be taught safely and to see our friends again. Father, I pray that you would keep us safe in school and that you would give wisdom to those in charge of us. I thank you for our health and our strength that you give us to face each new day. And I pray that you would keep us well and those that we love. I thank you for nature around us, Lord. I thank you for this time of year when we see the leaves start to change colour. I thank you for the sunshine and for the rain, for the mountains and for the ocean. Heavenly Father, we bring our thanks to you. Father God, we also bring our worries to you. We thank you that you are bigger than anything that can concern us. And we thank you that nothing is too small for us to bring to you in prayer. Heavenly Father, in these moments now, we bring to you the things that concern us personally.
Thank you, God, that you hear our prayers. Thank you that you do not leave us or forsake us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, my little friends who usually help me with the singing and the actions uh, when we do our praise songs are actually at school while I'm recording this. So we're going to use a video that we recorded over the summer um, and we're going to praise God that he is bigger. So join with us now as we sing Great Big God. Thank you so much for joining in with us. Now over the last couple of weeks um, we've been learning about Helen Roosevelt and the first week um, Vicky was telling us about Helen's early years, about her time at school and also about the questions that she had uh, when she was growing up. And then last week uh, Ricky was telling us the story about um, when Helen went to Africa um, and the beginning of her work there as a missionary. And today I'm going to tell you the next part of the story of Helen. So I want you to sit comfortably and let's begin. The Africans were amazed at the way Helen worked. They said she had the strength and energy of a man. But even Dr. Helen got tired. One day at the end of her first year in Congo, she felt she just needed a 10 minute break in her home for quietness and the chance to think straight. Then she could face the rest of the day. But waiting for her at home were a man, a woman and two small children. After the usual African greetings, Helen asked what they wanted. Work, the man replied. I don't employ people, Helen replied, but I can send you to someone who does. No, I was sent to you, the man insisted. I am a cook, he answered. I've cooked for missionaries for 18 years. Why did you leave your last job? Asked Helen. The man said nothing, 
but looked straight at her as he rolled up his shirt sleeve. Immediately Helen could see the problem. He had leprosy, a horrible skin disease. He had been sent to her for a job and medical help. God was showing this already overworked doctor that she should start a leprosy clinic. The man became her cook and together they built a little house for him and his family. They also had to put up a small mud and thatch building where people with leprosy could be treated. Then Dr Helen ordered medicine, bandages and equipment for the new clinic. Eventually, the box of supplies arrived. They were so excited to see the medicine that the people with leprosy would get. Helen was less than excited when she saw the bill. It came to about £575. Helen talked to God about it. Lord, I don't have the money to pay for any of this, but you are almighty God and I am sure you can provide the money. She slipped the bill into her Bible. She was trusting God. She knew God's promise in Philippians that says, And my God shall supply all your need, according to his riches, in glory by Christ Jesus. The end of the month came. It was time to pay all the bills. The rule was that every bill had to be paid at the end of the month. There must be no debts. But Helen could not pay this bill. The money was not there. The next day, the first of the month, Helen went to work, a bit disappointed with God. When she came home for lunch, the man said that there was a brown envelope for her. Another missionary had sent it over saying, sorry, this should have been sent to you yesterday. Helen opened the envelope and there was money inside and she shook it out onto the table. They counted it carefully and there were 4,800 Belgian Congo francs. Helen did some quick maths. They always took a tenth of every gift and gave it to the church, which was 480, leaving 4,320 francs. The money in the brown envelope was actually three gifts, one from England, one from North America and one from Northern Ireland. Each one had taken months to get there and two had a note saying, for your leprosy work. Helen hadn't even begun the leprosy work when the people sent the gifts. Only God could work it all out, and he did. God was reminding Helen, you can always count on me. Again and again in the Bible we read that God is faithful, and that means he keeps his word. She had enough money to pay the bill. Often Helen was faced with jobs she had never done before and she needed God's help. For a time she was the only doctor at the hospital and one day a little woman was brought in who needed an operation or she would die. Helen was not a surgeon, she had never done surgery and she didn't like blood. You've got to do it, the others urged. I can't, she argued. You must, they insisted. And so Helen gave in. One night, Helen was called to the maternity ward. A woman was having a baby, but things weren't going well. The baby was born, but she was tiny. We have to keep the baby warm, Helen told the nurses. They didn't have incubators like we do now, just a box to place the tiny new baby in. The baby was wrapped in cotton wool and a nurse went to fill a hot water bottle. But as soon as she came back, she looked very worried. What's wrong? asked Helen. Oh, when I was filling the hot water bottle, it burst. And this is our last one. And it wasn't possible to hurry down a forest path to a shop and buy another. Nights could be very cold in Congo. All right, Helen told the nurse. Put the baby in the box as near to the fire as is safe. Then you must sleep between the baby and the door to stop it getting a draft. Keep a check that the baby stays warm. Helen and the nurses wondered if they could save this precious little one's life. Next day, as usual at midday, Helen went over to the orphanage to pray with the children. She told them about the tiny baby and the burst water bottle. During the prayer, 10-year-old Ruth prayed, Please God, send us a hot water bottle. 
please send it this afternoon. And while you're at it, God, please send a doll for the little girl so she'll know that you really love her. Helen gasped at the boldness of the prayer. Halfway through the afternoon, as Helen was teaching her nurses, she got a message that there was a truck at her home. By the time she got there, the truck had gone, but the driver had left a big parcel outside. It was wrapped in brown paper and tied up with string and had British postal stamps. This was her first parcel from England in almost four years. She felt a tingle of excitement and just knew that she could not open this parcel alone. She had to get the children from the orphanage to help. Together they untied the string, carefully took off the paper and opened it. The children had never before opened a parcel like this and their eyes shone as they took out little knitted jumpers, bandages and soap. Helen put her hand in once more and touched. Could it really be? She grasped it and pulled out a brand new hot water bottle. Her heart nearly burst. When she lifted it out, the children cheered. Ruth, who was in the front row, jumped to her feet. If God sent the hot water bottle, he'll have sent the doll too, she yelled. She dived into the box and yanked out more things until she found what she was sure would be there. The doll. The children cheered wildly. Helen wanted to cheer, but she couldn't because she was crying for joy because of the goodness of God and the faith of this 10 year old girl. Ruth looked up at Helen. May I go with you to give the doll to the little girl so she'll know that Jesus really loves her? What a wonderful, powerful and loving God. He wants us to trust him. Ruth was just 10 years old, but she believed God. So it doesn't matter how young you are. God wants you to trust him for the things that you need, for help when problems come or when you are afraid. God had made sure that the parcel was mailed months earlier. He made sure that it was delivered on exactly the right day. And he put it into the heart of someone in England to send a hot water bottle to one of the hottest countries. And he made sure a child in England put a doll into the box. Thank you so much for listening to the story and we're going to hear more about Helen next week. Now we're going to go over to Caroline who's going to teach us a memory verse for today. Bye. Hi everyone, hope you all had a lovely week at school. Um, I'm Caroline and I'll be taking the memory verse this week for SML. So the memory verse this week is from Isaiah which is a book in the Old Testament and was written a very very long time ago. And the verse says, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. So this verse is a very important verse as it shows us that God will protect us. This verse shows us that no matter where we are or what we are doing, God is right behind us. So the first part of the verse says, fear not, for I am with you. So it's basically asking, do you have anything that you are scared of? And do you have anything you're scared of? Maybe it's loud noises or scary teachers, or maybe you're just a little bit frightened of the dark. But this verse shows us that we shouldn't be afraid of these things because God is there to protect us. So the next part of the verse simply says, be not despaired for I am your God. This is very similar to the first part as it just resonates just how much God loves us and how he is there to protect us. The last part of the verse states, I will strengthen you. God is showing us here, how he will build us up and help us to be less afraid. This also shows us that God was God is with us no matter what scary things we have to face in life. I'm sure we have a lot of scary things at the minute. But let's just go over the verse one more time. So, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. So do you want to repeat that at home? So, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God, and I will strengthen you. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10.